<laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Whoa. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Okay, good morning, everybody at Cash the Fire Scarborough family. Yay, yay, yay. Good whoa, morning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good on. morning. Mm. Well, I'm in a zippy mood this morning, everybody. <laughs> and who knows what's going to happen. Um, well. Spring has. Sprung. Yeah. Today, March 21st. Yeah. Is the beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere yes we all love spring it's yeah. full of promise isn't it yes it's uh it's it's um a promise of warmer days and longer days and glorious sunshine being able to meet outside go for long walks yes i'm excited about that We're absolutely excited about yeah. that reconnecting as, as many of you as possible mm-hmm Okay, so are we going to just jump right in? Yes, let's just jump right in. So we have been, this is day number two of a three-part series on preparing for Jesus. That's what I'm calling mm -hmm. this, preparing mm -hmm. for Jesus. Yeah. And we're speaking from Matthew chapter 25. There are three nicely compartmentalized segments. Uh-huh. Right. The first one was the parable of the ten virgins or the ten bridesmaids. And then the second one is the one we're addressing today, which is the parable of the uh, bags of money in the NIV. In other English translations, they refer to it as the parable of the talents. Mm -hmm. And I do want to talk about that, just to clarify something about that phrase, phraseology, you know, mm -hmm. talents. And then next week will be uh, Jesus speaking uh, quite pointedly about when he comes back, when the Son of Man returns yeah, yeah. and the, the the judgment of the nations. Mm. So that's, um, these passages, by the way, uh, are, I think, um, challenging. And and for me, whenever I say challenging, I don't mean challenging in the sense, oh, overwhelming, oh my gosh, this is way too much. No, no, no. Challenging in the sense that it draws us up, brings us up, calls us to a higher place. It calls us to maturity. Yes, yeah. because we have Jesus in us mm -hmm. and he enables us, he empowers us to live the life he's inviting us and calling us to live. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so it's not meant to be a heavy thing. Challenges yeah. in the kingdom aren't meant to be a, a heavy, overwhelming thing. Uh, it, they can be if we're not aware of the fact that we can rely on him. He has done all the heavy lifting for us. Yeah, I like that. I love that about a Christian faith. Let me just take a minute to mention that. I love that about following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, he never asks us or commands us to do anything that first he hasn't already done. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, uh, whenever he asks us, to, whenever he commands us to do something, he is always there to empower us by yes. His Spirit yes. to do what He's calling us to do. Yeah. And the end result of it all is that we get to be transformed as we go through the process. We get to be transformed more and more into His image. Yeah. So today we're talking about this parable of um, the bags of gold. Yes. And last week we, we talked about the parable of the ten virgins or the ten bridesmaids. And the takeaway point, the main point of that parable, as we said, every parable has one major point. Like we, when you tell a story, uh, you end up the story by saying, and the moral of the story is, mm -hmm. likewise with parables, the moral or the point of the parable is, last week was, 
buy oil now yes. buy oil now yeah. don't be like the five foolish virgins or bridesmaids who went off at an inappropriate time when they should have been in attendance mm -hmm. waiting for the bridegroom because they had not they did not have oil in their lamps mm -hmm. so he's calling us to have oil in our lamps on an ongoing basis and what that basically means is working on a, on a relationship with with God working on, on a relationship with Jesus uh, developing intimacy with him relying more and more on the work and the movement and the presence of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in our lives being able to hear him being able to listening hear him. paying yes, attention yes more Holy Spirit more Holy Spirit today we're talking about the uh, this parable of the ten um, sorry not the ten the um, we're talking about the parable of the bags Okay, and the takeaway point, let me give it to you right now. The takeaway point is be faithful as God is faithful. Mm -hmm. Be faithful. That is the takeaway point of this parable. Mm -hmm. Be faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. What has God put in your hand? What challenge? The challenge of this passage is uh, what responsibility, what task, what thing has he entrusted to us? That he wants us to steward well and actually mm -hmm. to cause to multiply yes amen yeah so that's the that's the main thrust of this of this morning's teaching mm -hmm. and again this is jesus speaking to us right we're just we're just unpacking what the scriptures are saying and, and this is jesus speaking to us the church as i said last week um uh, this is Jesus' last main discourse recorded in Matthew before he goes to the cross. That's right. So he's giving like really good stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, the disciples at the beginning of chapter 24 was asking Jesus, what will life look like uh, before you come back, basically? And then he goes into this thing about, you know, wars and rumors of wars and and um, uh, messiahs who are false messiahs coming to, to deceive people and false teachers. And he goes through all the horrible things, potentially horrible things that uh, are, are, are going to be happening in the last days. And then he swivels and begins to say that um, uh, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so today we're, we're going to ask him, um, Elsie, to read this, this parable, please. Mm -hmm. We'd love to. Yeah. So Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. Again, the kingdom of God will be like a man yes. going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Mm -hmm. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one, or to another one bag, and each according to his ability. Mm -hmm. Then he went on his journey. Mm -hmm. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. Mm -hmm. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. Yeah. But the man who had received one bag went mm -hmm. off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Mm. After a long time, the master of those servants Shandaka. returned and settled accounts with them. And the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You mm -hmm. have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Yeah. Come and share your master's happiness. Mm. And the man with two bags of oh, gold amazing. also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. And his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of mm. gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting 
where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Wow. So I was afraid and I went out and I hid your gold in the ground. See, here it is. Mm -hmm. Here is what belongs to you. Well, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Yeah. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags for whoever has uh, will be given more, more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless <laughs> servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. Pretty wow. intense. Yeah. Um, I, w I need to stay on track. Let me pray because I need to okay. stay on track. Otherwise, okay. I would get really distracted by all the finer details, which are all amazing in my mind anyway, about this mm -hmm. parable. But we have to stay yeah. on the main point. We don't have forever for this. So, Father, we just, well, we just ask for your help, Lord Jesus. Spirit of God, would you come and would you? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, come on. Help with focus, help with uh, staying on track, help with c communicating what you want to have said this morning. We lean back into you, Lord. We rely heavily on you. We need you. We need you, Jesus. We need your anointing. Yes, Lord. Well, thank you for your presence. Amen. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Amen. Wow, I feel better already. Okay, so let me just quickly recap. So this man, this wealthy business guy, he, uh, he's got to go away on a long business trip, okay? So he puts three of his um, employees in charge of working his business. Mm -hmm. And it says that he gave to them according to, to their ability. I think that's important. Because he actually knows them. And he knows what they can do. Right? He knows he knows their ability. So he knows that I, I can give this guy five. Because he will make it work. I can give this guy two. He will make that work. I'll give this guy one. Let's see how he does. Mm -hmm. um, so, he, and, then, and then the next thing is that as he, go, as, he, as he goes away and he gives them these talents. By the way, I should mention... Uh, that many of the English translations refer to this parable as a parable of the talents, and which it was accurate, very accurate, because the word in, in Greek actually is translated talents. But the trouble with that is uh, we assume in English that that means, you know, talents, meaning abilities and gifts and, and um, you know, proclivities, right? Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, in the Greek of that time, uh, the Talent was actually a measure of weight. Yes. So you have ounces, you have pounds, you have kilograms, and you have talents. Mm -hmm. And it, often the word talent referred to a talent of um, silver or gold. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, so the NIV, I think, wisely translates it bags of gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's giving us the idea in the, to understand the parable better, it's actually... Uh, resources, money he's giving uh, to his employees mm -hmm. to invest yes. and to use. And so it's not so much about talents and gifts that God's given to us. I'm sure we can apply it to a certain extent, but if you want to be true to the parable, mm -hmm. it's more about responsibility. It's more about a task that he's giving to us mm -hmm. uh, or is giving to these employees and therefore to us as we read it. And um, so he gives them, and then the, it says that the first guy, number five, the guy with five, it says at once he goes off and he um, invests, he works the money, right? He makes the money work. And the interesting thing about that is right away we see a, a sense of intentionality, like, like mm. purpose. Mm -hmm. At once he goes, man, I got this yeah. job, I'm going to work it, right? I love that yeah. because that's what, that's part of the dynamic of being faithful 
It requires, a, you know, a sense of focus, a sense of being on mission, being on purpose, mm -hmm. right? Having a purpose to your life. Yes. And then, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is it says he entrusted these things to his uh, employees. Mm -hmm. And that word entrust is it's sort of like, like he comes up to them and says, guys, I'm, I'm trusting you. Yeah. I'm trusting you with this. Yeah. So it's not just five bucks, you know, do whatever, do whatever you want with this is big money I'm giving to you. I'm trusting that you will mm -hmm. work it. It's something precious to him. Very precious to yeah. him. And um, so he, he does that. And then, um, of course, he comes back and, and, the, th and the two guys, uh, they say, Master, uh, while you were gone, I invested my five and I got ten. And uh, here, here it is. And I got two. I, I got two more. And the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. Wow, good and faithful. I think of those two words as, you know, good would be uh, having a good attitude, mm -hmm. right? Character. He's a good guy. He's mm -hmm. a solid guy. He's good. Reliable. Yeah, but then faithful, faithful would, would I think, would be more to do with aptitude. If good has to do with attitude... Faithful has oh. to do with aptitude or competence, character and competence. So not only are you good in terms of, of character, but you're also competent. Mm -hmm. You Very can get good. the job done. Excellent. Good and faithful servant. And it goes on to say, uh, you have been faithful with little. I'm going to give you more. Mm. And here's the kicker for me. Uh, uh, come and enter into the master's happiness it says in in the niv in other translations it says enter into the joy of the master wow i'm i may be jumping ahead of myself am i but the point i want to jump right into and say is this is amazing because there's something about faithfulness mm -hmm. that makes the master happy wow. makes the master joyful hmm. faithfulness makes the master happy mm -hmm. that's a uh, point number one what do we want to learn from this faithfulness makes the master happy and why would faithfulness make the mm -hmm. master happy mm -hmm. well i think a couple of reasons number one the master himself has faithfulness as a high value oh. god it, the, the attribute of faithfulness is a key attribute Mm -hmm. in 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 God's character. So he sees himself in his servants. The father is a, is excited, ecstatic when he sees his kids, you and me, demonstrating something of his qualities. Beautiful. Right? So he is faithful and he sees he's excited when he sees faithfulness in us. Yeah. Like any good father would do or parent would do when they see something of their good qualities being passed on to their kids. Yeah. Well, likewise, likewise, God is jumping over the moon, so to speak, when he sees happiness, I mean, he sees faithfulness yeah. in us, his kids. Mm -hmm. And it's also, so that's point number one. It makes God happy because it reflects his character. But also, it, he's excited, I believe, because uh, as somebody says, this lifetime, everybody, is... Uh, an internship for what's to come. Mm. This is not the end of everything. Mm -hmm. When we die, that's only the, be the beginning of a, of a rebirth into an eternal life with God. And that eternal life is not a static. If you have the image of heaven being, you know, a bunch of people playing harps on clouds in the sky, mm. that is not anything close to what heaven is. In the renewed wow. heavens and the renewed earth, it'll be a lot, in some ways, like what we have now, except completely devoid of any trace, any power, any touch of sin and sinfulness. Completely gone. We can't really imagine that no. fully, but it's going to be glorious. It's going to be a renewed heaven and a renewed earth where, where, where the, the heaven, the spiritual heaven that now exists, will we'll co-mingle and be married to this earthly uh, realm 
and it's going to be a completely different thing. And Jesus is the model, the, mm -hmm. the, the resurrected Jesus is the model, not just for what we will be like, but what this, what this world will be like in the future. Can't and wait. it's never going to be static and boring and, and you know, on, in, on interesting. There's going to be lots of movement. There's going to be uh, um, uh, development and expansion and growth. And you and I, we will get to co-rule with our big brother, Jesus. Mm. Wow, heaven on earth. And I believe that based on, on how we live now in this lifetime, will reflect on what we get to do in that yeah. life. Yeah. And uh, the, the alternative um, version in Luke, Luke chapter 19, gives us an inkling because... It, it, um, it doesn't say enter into the master's happiness. It says um, uh, uh, you have been faithful in, in this. I will give you 10 cities or five cities. Yes. So it, it's, in Luke, it's speaking about the reward in terms of rulership and influence that we have in, in, mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. That's my reading of it. Mm -hmm. And so... That's fantastic. So number one, what, what can we learn from this parable in terms of faithfulness? Faithfulness is huge with God. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal for him. It brings us great joy. The second thing I want to share this morning is uh, the little much principle. I've been talking to our team uh, repeatedly about the little much principle. And it says again, I'll repeat, when the, the good guys come, the number five and number two, they come and they uh, say, you know, I've, I've increased uh, what you gave to me. And then he says, you have been faithful in little, in little you will be given much. Mm. And that's a very important principle in the kingdom, I believe. Mm. That God wants to reward faithfulness. And furthermore, towards the end of the parable, when the guy who didn't do so well, the guy with the one talent, or with the one uh, a job to do, the one responsibility, um, he buried it, which, by the way, was in that day, was a, a very common thing to do. You want to, the thing that you, tre excuse me, the thing that you treasure, you, you, you want to keep it safe, so you buried it, mm. right? Um, anyway, so, so this guy who, uh, you know, didn't do well with what he was given. Uh, it says that the master says, take that away from him and give it to the guy who has 10. And for some of us in our North American culture right now would think, oh my gosh, that's, that's like making the rich richer and the poor poor. Yeah, that sounds harsh. It sounds harsh. Um, um, I don't think it has anything to do with the rich becoming rich and the poor becoming poor. And that mentality is not what's in this parable. What is the main point? is that there are rewards for faithfulness. Mm -hmm. The rewards for yes. faithfulness. That's the big deal for God. Yeah, it uh, is. He, he, doesn't do, he doesn't just like the fact that we are faithful, as He is faithful, but He gives us rewards yeah. for being faithful. Yeah. It's a big deal. Um, I, as I'm ruminating on this, a, a, a thought came to mind, this little much principle. You know, back in the day, Folks, when uh, I would go to the gym, when we would, you remember going back to the gym? Back in the day. Back in the day when people used to go to the gym. Um, you know, it's completely theoretical now because I haven't been exercising even at home, unfortunately. Uh, that's a side point. Uh, we erased that from the tape. But anyway, um, you go to the gym, right? And you start off, you know, I get a, a 10 pound, in my case, you know, a, a 500 pound weight. And uh, you begin to lift. You do some bicep, biceps uh, thing, right? You do 10, 10 of those. You do three tens of 500 pounds, right? Oh, yeah. On day one. And then day two, you go back again. And you find, oh, my gosh, my capacity has increased. I can now do, I can now do uh, 700 pounds, uh, you know, uh, three times uh, 10 of 700 uh, pounds, right? And uh, the point I'm making there is something that as we work out, as we work our muscles, we increase our capacity. Mm -hmm. We increase our ability for more. Mm -hmm. And that's the point I'm making, that uh, what's 
what applies in the physical also applies mm -hmm. in the spiritual. That, um, that when we are faithful, right? Well, at, at the gym, okay, I should have mentioned I had to be persistent. I had to be continual. I had to be, I had to be faithful to, go, to be going to the gym and mm -hmm. to be uh, doing the hard work of working out. Right? Even when I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. Right? But being, being faithful resulted in me being able to lift more weights. Mm -hmm. That's the main point there. And so likewise in the spirit, when we are faithful with what God gives us now, and we work it well, and we, we, we um, persevere even when we don't want to, or when things get, when, it, when, when the going gets tough, we keep going. What we're actually doing is we're building muscles on the inside, so to speak, mm -hmm. so that we have a greater capacity to, to handle what God wants to mm -hmm. give us. Like more and bags of gold. <laughs> like more bags of gold. Or re exactly. And rewarding us with uh, more responsibility, more influence. Mm -hmm. right? That's why faithfulness is so important, guys. That's why faithfulness is so important. So if we're going to be talking about faithfulness, what would it look like for a person to be faithful? What does faithful look like? What, what does a faithful person look like? Um, Give me a couple. If, if, if we were in a room together, I'd be asking you to shout out to me right now, what are some words that would uh, describe for you what a faithful person is? Uh, trustworthy. Yeah. And reliable. If you give somebody a task, yeah. you know they're going to yeah. uh, follow through with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can diligent, trust somebody. Dil diligent, devoted, loyal. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. Those are all good. many, many words along those lines that would speak about what faithful ness is or what a faithful person is what would be some words that are contrary to faithfulness mm. well, well that guy over there far away we don't know him really but he's not faithful you can't rely on him yeah yeah it's not he's fickle he's fickle he's untrue right doesn't keep his promises mm, doesn't keep his word faithless disloyal mm. would be some words yeah and he doesn't have a lot of faith. He's probably yeah. fearful. He's very fearful, yeah. yeah. You see, the, just going back to the parable, the guy who was, um, the guy who had the one coin, one uh, talent and buried it, he didn't really understand who God was really. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had a, a totally incorrect understanding of who the master was, who, who, who God is. And so as a result of that, he thought, you know, God was a heavy-handed fellow who was, um, you know, overly demanding and whatever. And so that resulted in fear mm -hmm. in his heart, which led him to bury his talent. Yeah. Bury his light under a bushel. He was afraid of his master. He was afraid of his master. Yeah. Uh, not knowing that his father was actually quite opposite to what his image of the, of the yeah. father was. Yeah. And so, uh, so these attributes that we're mentioning in brief, these five things that we mentioned, um, you know, God is like that. God is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. right? God is loyal to us. God is reliable. God keeps his promises. God is diligent in, and God is devoted to us mm -hmm. and on and on and on. Yeah. This is what God is like, everybody. Yeah. Right? You know, it says in 2 uh, Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 11 and 13, 11, and, 11 to 13, it says, This is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. <coughs> if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he mm. is. I love that. Even when we are unfaithful, and I know that I have been unfaithful to God, I've been unfaithful to God's calling in my life at different, at different episodes of my life where I thought, man, this is just way too much work. I don't really want to do this anymore. I prefer to do something else. And um, I have not been consistent in my faithfulness to mm -hmm. Him. 
but the point of this passage is a glorious one that if we are unfaithful he remains faithful to himself and to his own word because he cannot deny himself we can we always have good intentions and great desires but the reality is always a different story Mm -hmm. not so with god his word is true and he's always he always has the capacity to fulfill what he says he's going to do isn't it what an amazing reality what an amazing reality so when he's asking us to be faithful like he is faithful as i mentioned the very beginning it's because he is Mm -hmm. like that he is totally 100 percent faithful Mm -hmm. he's totally committed to us He's totally longing for the best for each and every one of us. Yeah. He gets great joy. He gets joy from us when he faithful. when we are when we exhibit faithfulness. Yeah. In stewarding what he's given to us well and increasing it and multiplying it. Mm-hmm. Whatever that may be. <sighs> so if there's anybody out there who is it was thinking man i am not uh as faithful as i would want to be i'm not perfect nobody's perfect um but there was great recourse because here's the big deal everybody one of the fruit of the spirit one of the fruit of the spirit found in galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 it says but the holy spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So uh, it's a fruit of the Spirit. Faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. And here's the picture I have in mind. I'm not an, I mean, you grew up on a farm. I don't know anything about farms really. I, when I was in high school, the school had a farm, and one of the things that we did was we would go there. I was given a plot of land, I think maybe 10 feet by 4 feet, whatever, and my job was to plant corn, you know, for, for a term. Nothing really happened. Uh, so I, I, anyway, the point I want to make before I distract myself, distract myself too much is that uh, as far as I know, there is no plant around, right? Who is, has his leaves out and his limbs, um, his, when it branches out. Oh, I'm gonna produce uh, the cherry tree, I'm gonna produce cherry, oh. or the mango tree, I'm gonna produce mango. Or I'm gonna produce faithfulness now, I'm gonna oh, try hard to produce faithfulness or love or joy. No, no, no. The only work that the plant does, as far as I understand, is that it it labors to enter the rest of going deeper taking its roots deeper Beautiful. into the ground abiding it's a, it abides in the ground if the metaphor works or whatever but the point is that the only effort that we really need to do is not to try to be more faithful not to try to be more loving or be more full of peace or whatever but go deeper in a relationship uh, with God. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, automatically an outcome, an overflow, a fruit of a a deeper relationship with God will be faithfulness and all these other amazing attributes. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So going back to last week's point of buying oil, as Jesus is beginning to wrap this whole thing up, as Jesus is beginning to come back again, right? We're not talking just about, you know, futuristic guesswork about what the end times will be. We're talking about right now, mm. we are living in the end times for the last 2,000 years anyway. Yeah. So what do we do now? How do we exist now? Well, last week, we buy oil now. Mm-hmm. Today, we seek to be faithful yeah and the way to seek to be faithful is by working on our relationship with the holy spirit Mm -hmm. because he produces faithfulness in us i want to be more faithful don't you don't you yeah we all want to be more faithful we all want to be more like jesus we all want to be more like our father in heaven Mm -hmm. so why don't we just spend some 
minutes just praying and just asking the Holy Spirit to come and 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 help us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well, well. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you that we can relax and we can rest in your embrace. We can choose to believe. That as we lean back into you, as we make choices right now and on a regular basis to Mm -hmm. enter into your rest, to put our roots deeply planted in you, make choices to choose you rather than our own flesh, our own natural choices. We choose you, Holy Spirit. Mm And we thank it as we do that in faith, Lord, you will produce the, f- the fruit of your righteousness, of your nature in us. Yes. Wow. Well, thank so, you, Lord, for, yeah. for uh, giving us a desire, Roha. a desire to be faithful. Thank you that, mm. that um, as we lean into you, as we, we trust you, that you build trust in us, that your very nature is being shaped and honed in Mm. us as we turn our eyes to you and our hearts to you. uh, The fruit of the Spirit begins to be evident. Thank you, Lord, for planting Mm. us right in you. We welcome that work. Yeah. Lord, we just release right now, by faith, we release your Holy Spirit into every single hungry heart Mm -hmm. who desires to become more like you, who desires to be, in today's message, to be more faithful in our walk with you, whatever that would look like, more faithful in the way that you uh, lead us in our workplace. We want to to exhibit faithfulness in our Mm -hmm. workplace. We want to exhibit faithfulness in our relationships. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Father. We want to be faithful to the tasks that you have entrusted to us, mm-hmm. both individually and as a church. Lord, I believe that the, the big task, the big responsibility you've given to us as the body of Christ, as a church, is to make disciples. And so we set our minds, we set our hearts to be faithful to that responsibility, Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your leadership, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Wow. Thank you, Father, for relationships with one another. Mm-hmm. And that you're, you've are uh, you called us to be responsible with each other, to yeah. love one another. Um, mm-hmm. I, I also feel like uh, some of you are saying, well, I've, I, I've got willpower. Uh, and the Lord's mm-hmm. like... Um, you you will hit the wall. Yes. You will hit the wall 100%. in your own willpower. 100%. Um, that even that part you need to recognize that He is your strength. He is He is the one that works into you, in you to will and to do of His good pleasure. That it, it's His nature, His Spirit, it's His work in you. And there's a place of surrender a place of drinking in, a place mm. of dependency on Him that will produce faithfulness. And there's there's an acknowledgement um, deep on the inside of you of just how dependent you are on the sap of His Spirit. And we bless that today. We mm. bless your, your desire for Him, your desire for Him. And uh, each one of us, Lord, we surrender our hearts back to you, that you would establish us, that you would, that you would mm-hmm. um, uh, work in us to will and to do of your good pleasure with your breath in us, with your strength in us, and that truly uh, the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Bless each and every one of you. You guys are gems, stars, yeah. champions. Shakaraba. Oh, come on.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Bless you, everybody. Join the prayer times yeah. if you would like. And uh, we'll hang out. That we'll see you on the Hangout Zooms. And uh, on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have a, another wonderful equipping time together. Yeah, part three on hearing the voice of God, Kayan speaking on dreams, dreams and, and visions. visions. Yeah. yeah. Come and be equipped to go deeper in our relationships with our wonderful Heavenly Father. Yeah. And Holy Ghost and Jesus. And fire! <laughs> and let's mm. be faithful. Yeah. Amen. Okay, amen. Bye-bye.